Hey, I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek, and this is February 2020's Top 10 Hottest Games, based on the titles that are generating the most traffic, discussion, and a few other factors on the Board Game Geek website over the past 30 days. These games are tracked on the site's hot games list, and the higher and longer a game remains on that list throughout the course of the month, the higher it ranks in our Top 10 overall. 169 different games appeared on that list over the past 30 days, including the return of a game that last appeared on the list nearly a year ago. Flipping five spots to finish at number 10 is Root, an area control game featuring asymmetrical animal abilities by Leader Games. In Root, resourceful rodents and aerial revolutionaries revolt rallying to reclaim real estate in retaliation against rampaging royalty, Marquita Cat, who reaches to wrangle all rural regions in his rapacious wrath. Root hasn't appeared in the top 10 for several months, which my tongue has been quite thankful for, but its resurgence is likely assisted by the release of its newest expansion, The Underworld. This expansion adds new factions, including the Great Underground Duchy, an imperial faction that mixes the flexibility of the Marquis with the escalating Irie dynasties, and the Covid Conspiracy, a secretive faction that hatches plots directly into the hands of their opponents. It also includes two new maps, allowing players to dig tunnels on a mountain or fight to control a ferry on a lake. Nemesis continues to keep its claws in the countdown by coming in at number 9, after slipping two spots this month. Nemesis by Awakened Realms is a 1-5 player survival sci-fi game where players, as the crew of a long dormant voyaging spaceship, are awoken suddenly from hibernation by the ship's emergency rescue systems. And now, as if that weren't enough, the crew must find what triggered the emergency and resolve it before whatever's causing the strange Alien Sounds down at the other end of that corridor meets up with the crew to do something quite un unpleasant to them. Nemesis has been very difficult to find in retail locations for the past few months, resulting in prices periodically surging on the secondary market. Well, unlike the crew of your doomed spaceship, help is on the way. Awaken Realms' partner, Rebel Games, recently stated that they are planning some reprints of the game this year, including two in the US, an initial small print run within the next two or three months, and a bigger one over the summer. So hopefully this news puts out a beacon of hope for those who have been trying to locate a copy of Nemesis. Which still, yes, just still includes me. Spot number eight houses Oath. Chronicles of Empire and Exile, which rose 48 spots as this month's biggest climber. Expected in 2021, Oath sets the stage for 1-6 players to guide the course of history in an ancient land. Players might take on the role of agents bolstering the Old Order or scheme to bring the kingdom to ruin. I know which one I'm doing. The consequences of one game will ripple through those that follow, changing what resources and actions future players may have at their disposal and even altering the game's core victory condition. The designers of Oath proclaim that there's no fancy production tricks, app-assisted mechanisms, or production gimmicks in this game. There's no scripted narratives or predetermined endpoints either. Instead, the history embedded into each copy of Oath will grow to be as unique as the players who helped build it or helped to destroy it. Dropping down six spots to end the month at number seven is last month's number one, Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon, published by Awakened Realms. In a land slowly sinking into the weirdness and torn apart by conflict, surviving each individual day is a challenge all on its own. No, this isn't a game about trying to explain to your parents that Catan and Settlers of Catan are actually the same game. This is Tainted Grail The Fall of Avalon. To overcome the challenges that this game presents to players, their characters must develop several conflicting attributes, such as brutality versus empathy, practicality, and spirituality. These traits then unlock a rich choice of mutually exclusive skills and lead to different deck building strategies, all done with the objective of making character advancement meaningful and deep. 
The designers of the game wanted to push the boundaries of telling a non-linear narrative, building upon the Awakened Realm's past experiences of infusing ambitious stories with engaging board game mechanisms and striking visuals. That's a striking visual. Slipping down three spots to end the month at number six is Maracaibo, in which players try to increase their influence with three nations over the course of four rounds. Starting in Havana, players will travel around the map in their ship over the course of those four rounds, performing actions at each stop. Maracaibo is another game with a reprint that's on the horizon, and according to a post on the game's forums, an allocation of the next printing was just shipped to North American distributors in mid-January and should be arriving in retail locations really, really soon. Additionally, this second printing is reported to fix some color errors that affected certain cards in the first print run. Dropping down one spot to settle in at number five this month is Terraforming Mars, a game that takes place in the 2400s when mankind begins to terraform the planet Mars. And by mankind, I mean, of course, giant faceless corporations sponsored by the world government on Earth who initiate huge projects to raise the red planet's temperature, the oxygen level, and the ocean coverage until the environment becomes habitable enough for those giant faceless corporations to raise their tiny little S-corps and sole proprietorships in peace. For those who are looking to add even more content to Terraforming Mars, its fifth expansion, Turmoil, was recently released, which adds a political aspect to the game. But you probably already knew about that expansion because this game has appeared in the top 10 every single solitary month since I started this series, so I've mentioned it quite a bit. So if you're still, for some reason, looking for even more content for Terraforming Mars to, to sup up, you may want to look into the four special promo cards that are available in Board Game Geek's online geek store. One of them even features penguins, and who doesn't love penguins? Except, I don't know, maybe a leopard seal. But then again, they, they love to eat penguins. So that's um, not the answer I'm looking for. Freshly hatched at number four is Wingspan, designed by Elizabeth Hargrave and published by Stonemeyer Games. Wingspan is a competitive, medium-weight, card-driven engine-building game in which you and your fellow players are bird enthusiasts, researchers, bird watchers, ornithologists, and yes, even collectors all seeking to discover and attract the best birds to your network of wildlife preserves. In short, you dig them birds. And if you can't get enough of our feathery friends, even more birds are soon on their way in Wingspan's second expansion, Oceana, which is coming later this year. Oceana will focus on birds of Australia and New Zealand. And that is everything that I, I currently know about, about this expansion. But more information about it will be posted as soon as it becomes available. Gaining two spots to end the month at number three is Marvel Champions the Card Game by Fantasy Flight Games. Marvel Champions the Card Game invites players to embody iconic heroes from the Marvel Universe as they battle to stop infamous villains from enacting their devious schemes. Previously, on last episode, we took a look at the various expansions that have been released for this game already. But since then, another expansion has already been announced, the Black Widow Hero Pack. The Black Widow Hero Pack includes a pre-built deck for Black Widow, utilizing the Justice aspect, the Taskmaster Nemesis set, and additional cards to help increase the deck building options. So with well-rounded base stats and a preparation card for every occasion, Black Widow is always ready for what's coming up next. And by the look of it, what's next will probably be another Marvel Champions card game expansion pack, which I'm sure we'll be talking about about next month. I don't mind. Retaining its spot at number two this month is a little game that perhaps you have heard about called Gloomhaven, a game of Euro-inspired tactical combat in a persistent world of shifting motives by Cephalofair Games. So what's new with Gloomhaven this month? Well, around the end of January, Cephalofair Games sent files to their printer for the next Gloomhaven expansion, Jaws of the Lion. They also recently stated in their blog that its main rulebook is also close to being handed off to their graphic designer, even though about half of the scenarios are not yet fully written. Nevertheless, Jaws of the Lion is currently scheduled to be released this summer, and, as per its designer Isaac Childress, will hopefully, quote, hit that sweet spot of being accessible to a wider audience, while also staying true to what makes Gloomhaven 
great. And topping this month's countdown at number one is On Mars from Eagle Griffin Games, which rose 22 spots. In On Mars, each player's goal is to develop a self-sustaining Martian colony independent of any terrestrial organization, especially from those giant mega corporations that just want to terraform Mars. As the colony expands, players will shift their focus to constructing mines and power generators and water extractors, greenhouses, oxygen, factories, and shelters. And all of this stuff is going to require understanding the importance of water, air, power, and food, the necessities for survival. Because this survival is accomplished over the course of several rounds, each one consisting of two phases, the shuttle phase and the colonization phase. In the shuttle phase, players can travel between the colony and the space station in orbit around the planet. But during the colonization phase, players will have different actions available to them depending on their current location. If they're in orbit, they can take blueprints, buy and develop technologies, and take supplies from the warehouse. And if on the planet's surface, they can instead construct or upgrade buildings, gain scientists and new contracts, welcome new ships, or explore the planet's surface. And throughout the game, players are also trying to complete missions, because once a total of three missions has been completed, the game ends, and the player with the most victory points, called opportunity points, is declared the winner. And there you have it, your list of the top 10 hottest board games as of February 2020. And for more board game countdowns, news, previews, playthroughs, and more, be sure to subscribe and turn on that fun little notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos posted on the channel. And until next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Board Game Geek, and take care.